Saudamos a todos com a paz do Senhor Jesus. We greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to the word of the Lord, we are going to stand up at this moment in Revelation, last book of the Bible. Revelations. Revelations 19 verse 9. Revelations 19 verse 9. The word of the Lord says the following. Then he said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the, la the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. Lord, we praise to you. We are thankful for this moment in which we have fellowship with you. We are asked that your word may bless our hearts and that once again your people in this place we pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may sit down. This verse that we have just read it speaks of a blessing, of a joy that has no end, that will never finish, of an eternal joy. And it also said that those that will have uh, this joy that will never end, they will have this eternal joy, they are going to be the ones that will take part on the supper, on the wedding of the Lamb or the marriage of the Son of God. When the Son of God stayed, uh, came here and became a man and stayed here with us, at a certain day he was on a house of a man, one of the main figures of the Pharisees that invited him to go to his house. And this religious man, a Pharisee, he received Jesus on his house. And when he received Jesus in his house, he prepared a banquet. He prepared a supper. And when we remember supper, uh, Jesus says something interesting. He says, I will take a supper with you, and I will supper with you, with him, and he with me. That's how it's written. So when man is participant on a, on a supper with Jesus, when man opens up his house, he opens up his heart, and when he's received Jesus in his life, he also receives the right of being received on heaven and being received on eternity. And on that banquet, we spoke about that last week and uh, in a couple of previous Sunday schools. It speaks of a certain man that prepared a great supper and invited many. But all of the people that that certain man invited they had excuses to reject the invitation. Oh, I bought a piece of ground and I need to see it. I, buy, I bought five uh, yokes of oxen and I wa want to try them. I got married and therefore I cannot go. And all of those people that heard this parable from Jesus there on the house of that individual that open up his doors to receive Jesus, they all heard that parable. And that parable was an alert to all of the people that were sitting down at the table with Jesus. And this expression, eating bread, 
what sitting at the table is referring to the fact that all the people that were at the moment in fellowship with Jesus. The word sitting at the table with Jesus is means to be in fellowship with Him. That's why when people were sitting down at the table with Jesus, they were in fellowship with Jesus. The Bible says that one of them said, what a wonderful thing. It will be What a blessing it will be the man or the one who eats bread on the kingdom of heaven. So that man had already experienced here on earth a little bit of that joy, a little bit of that happiness that one day he would be experiencing, participating with Jesus in heaven. And then Jesus says, speaks about this parable at the table. And there were there at that place the relatives, the friends, the rich neighbors. All of the nobles were there at the table eating bread with Jesus. Like we are all doing here at the table with the Lord eating bread which is He, the living bread that came down from heaven, that feeds, that feeds the world. So, the same way as in the past, Jesus was giving an alert to the people that were in fellowship, that were at the table with Him. Today is not different. Today, the Lord is giving us an alert for this moment, for the great day that is coming here. The day in which we will participate and we, we will sit at the table with Him and on His kingdom and on His eternity. And so this certain man is God. Like in another parable, Jesus says, a certain king that celebrated the marriage, the wedding of his son. And it is interesting that when He speaks about a certain man, He, he tells the gas is come because everything is ready. On the parable of the king, he says, come because everything is ready. There's a song that says the following, get ready church, because in heaven everything is already prepared, awaiting for the arrival of whom? Of his guests. And now, the parable that was told by Jesus, speaking about a certain man that celebrated great, great Supper, and also speaking about a king that was also celebrating there the Supper of his son, the wedding of his son. It was taking place. It was happening. It was becoming real at that moment. It is interesting on the previous two parables, it said, it's already prepared, Every, everything is ready. And when we here look, when we look here on chapter 19 of Revelations, a verse a little earlier says the following, because the wedding of the Lamb is coming, is at hand. And what mattered to us is the bride, what is, what is it? And the bride got ready. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And who is the wife? Who is, is the wife that has made herself ready? The wife that has made herself ready is you, my brother and sister, that do not that did not reject the invitation to the wedding of the son the son of the king that did not reject the invitation of uh, that certain man that decided to celebrate a great supper. And the, the people that had rejected the invitation, they did not participate. Why? Because the king had 
establish a decree, he said, on the last version, he said, in no way they will participate on my supper, on my feast. And here in Revelations, the Lord speaks about this meeting. The Lord speaks about this moment in which the groom will get married with the bride. Speaks about this moment where the bride is already prepared, has already got prepared. Be girded your waist and your lamps be, may be lit. And how about the wife? The Bible says that when this John that described Revelation is inspired by the Lord, he was taken to the eternity with God. And there on the eternity, an elder approached to him and asked him a question. And he said, John, this, who are they? And where they came from, John? And John answered, Lord, you know. But what was interesting on this question was that the elder that was with John in eternity, he didn't say, hey, Lord, who are those? All the way down to the church of Pompano. He didn't use this expression that the song says, the ones, because the ones you use for the ones who are far away. But here he uses the one, the word these, who are these, because, they, because he is close to me. So who are these, John? They are nearby. They're, that are here with us, that are participating on this wedding, this marriage of Jesus with the church. Who are these, John? And he answers, these are the ones who washed their garments and whited them out with, in the blood of the Lamb. And it shows, shows the church that was washed on the blood of Jesus, a church that accepted the sacrifice of God or of the Son of God, that accepted the, the gift, the favor, the grace of God, a church that did not reject the invitation for the wedding, that did not exchange the heavenly to the earthly, that didn't exchange eternity for the fleeting things of this earth, like those men did. They bought pieces of ground and yokes of oxen. It is a church that did not get married with the world, with the flesh. Because that man there, he said, I bought a piece of ground, and now I bought a, a yoke of oxen, now I got married. He didn't. He, he got married with himself, with his uh, social, political, economical um, things, cultural, economical. But a church that gets married with a groom who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a church that has a commitment with Him, the salvation comes from Him. Grace comes from Him. The power comes from Him. The mercy comes from Him. Comes from Him. Because the blood was his who that was shed on the cross of Calvary for her, for love, her, love of her, for people that do not pay a high price for their perdition. Because those men they pay a high price. They bought a few. They bought a, a six yokes of oxen. They paid a high price for their perdition. But there's a people. They accepted grace, the favor, and the mercy of God. That recognized the high price 
that was paid on the cross of Calvary for love of your, of mine, and our lives. A people that not only washed their garments but whited them out or sanctified themselves. You know why, my brethren? Because without sanctification, no one will see the grace of God, the glory of God. And the word says that at this moment, it was a moment of joy, jubilation, and adoration. Sometimes people get read, uh, worried about with the rapture of the church and they become afraid. The servant of God, the one has washed and, and whitened his garments and that did not reject invitation, that made a covenant not with the things of this world but with the Lord. The one that has eaten everyday bread at the table with Jesus has had fellowship with the Lord. He's not worried with these things. He's not afraid regarding this moment. He's actually re rejoicing. He's happy. He's glorifying the Lord because this is the thing that he has been waiting for. The return of his King. The return of his Lord. The, the return of his Savior. The word, my brethren, says the following. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Brother and sister, you are a blessed one. The Lord has a great joy. Where is the, 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 the joy that you have ever experienced to this day? It is a joy, as I said before, that will never end, that will last forever. And the people that took part of this marriage and is here written in the book of Revelations, what were they doing at that moment? The Bible says, my brethren, that they were shouting hallelujahs. Hallelujahs. You know what the word hallelujah means? Hallelujah is an expression of praise. It's an expression of gratitude for this so great salvation that the Lord has provided for us. And they say the following, Hallelujah and salvation and power and honor and glory. They all belong to you. They belong to the Lord. So it is a people that at this moment is, is shouting Hallelujah, is glorifying the Lord. Because the wedding of the Lamb is coming near and the bride, the church is, is ready, is prepared. That's why we say hallelujah. That's why we have gratitude for our salvation. All the power, all the honor, all the glory belong to Him and come from Him. Write my brother and sister, write down. John wrote down so that he would not forget of that moment. Write down. We write down so many things, so many foolishness. Now write down this. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Write it down. Write it down. Keep it in your heart. Do not write it on a piece of paper with ink. But let the Holy Spirit write it on the tables of your heart. The, the, the marriage is prepared and the church is already prepared. That's what salvation is. It is to accept invitation. It is not to reject the grace of God towards your life. You have been invited. I was invited. We have all been invited for this banquet, for this supper, for this wonderful meeting with the Lord. Not, not here, but in eternity. So we cannot, at this moment, allow the joy of our salvation let go of the those blessings and get committed with the things of this world. 
the wedding is coming near. The church is prepared. It is time for the departure, like the children sing. But, but you still have time. The Lord has done this at this last hour. He's given us time so that we might repent. Repent before and convert and be can't become a temple of refreshing. This time of refreshing that the Lord wants to give you. This time of peace and joy and glorification, the praise. This time for you to participate, be a participant on the wedding of the Lamb. Now, brethren, the word says that at that supper, there were people from every place, from every nation, tongues, tribes and nations everywhere because people from all the peoples tongues and nations they were not they had not they were had not been committed with the things of this life why people of all the peoples tongues and nations they didn't go to religion to the politics to the money to the culture what else I did I miss the social that brought them together at that place you know, that was not the reason why they went there they gathered in that place it was because they washed their garments and whited them out with the blood of the Lord what the lamb Jesus is preparing a feast and these people that John saw he saw these people participate in this feast. And the desire of the Lord, my brother and sister, is that you also participate on this feast. That you may be a blessed one, a happy person. And the word, like the song says, happiness is not the things that we, we acquire in the world. It's covenants that we make here on earth. Joy is when you make a covenant with the Lord, make a covenant with eternity. Joy is to have Christ beside me. Do you know what salvation is? It is to feel a great joy. And these people were enjoying this joy, of uh, this happiness, the joy of salvation. Hallelujah. Salvation. Glory. Power and honor. And that's what the Lord has for he, the cho His chosen ones, the one who have been called for the wedding of the Lamb. And it is for you who are here with us in this place that is sitting down here at the table with the, the Lord and has enjoyed the fellowship because He has already sanctified His guests. And when we plead for the blood of Jesus, He has sanctified each one of us and made us participants on this kingdom, made us participants on this supper that will take place on eternity. My brother and sister, everything is prepared. On heaven, everything is prepared. The church is ready. The time is the time of the departure. But today, there is still time. If today you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit the one who is speaking with you, do not harden your heart. You have been, you are a chosen one uh, of God. God chose you to save you. Do not reject the project of God for your life.
put the last uh, part of the song. Yeah, there it is. We need to sing. Blessed are the guests. Because they gave it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sister has said there. Salvation. Glory. Power. And honor. To the Lamb, Son of God. Because they were vigilant, they prayed and they were victorious because the desire of the Lord is that's that's the desire of the Lord. That's why the Lord says we are more than victorious on the one that had loved us first, because I'm sure that the death and life, the principalities and no other creature will be able to separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And this is the pact to the covenant of the Lord towards us. The covenant is on His Son. Because He is the one who paid a high price for our lives. That's the beginning of the Lord. They are filled with the Spirit of God. Praising the Lord. Not here, my brethren, but in eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is our destination, a place in heaven, a home in eternity. And you don't even need to be good. Oh, you, you can't say, oh, I have a sin, so I, I'm not going to go to heaven. Don't say that. The Bible says that everybody sin is, it was destitute to, of the grace of God. And the, the wage of sin is death. Amen. But the Bible says that whatever abund was ab abundant, sin over uh, grace was overabundant. There was a house there was Jesus on the cross there were Jesus and two other individuals who were criminals. They were sinners. Two sinners beside Jesus on the cross. One went to heaven and the other didn't. You know why? They both sinned. They both sinned. But one went to heaven, the other didn't. And the brother answered there. Because the one rejected. It is not the sin that prevents you from going to heaven. It is your rejection of the grace and the law of the mercy and the mercy, uh, the favor of God. There was a great multitude there. It's written in the Bible from every papal tongues and nations. They have all sinned. They have all sinned. They have all been destituted of the glory of God. In Romans, it speaks of that. We have all been destituted of the grace, the glory of God, because we all have sinned. But the Lord God made us an invitation. This invitation is made for you, my brother and sister, here tonight. The invitation is for you to be a blessed one. For you to get out from under this condemnation to be absolved it is the love of God because God loves us in such a way that sent his only son so that whoever believes in him and accept him may not perish but have eternal life do not reject the grace of God the love of God his mercy because it is this that will call will bring you to participate on the white and the lamb. This is what is going to allow you to enter into, through the gates of heaven. Blessed are the one. Blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb. And those words were they are the true words of God. These is these are the true words of God. Blessed are you, my brother and sister who have been called once again to be participant on the project of God, the marriage of the Supper of the Lamb. Amen. The Lord has shown in a spiritual gift about a woman. She entered here anguished, sad. And she, she brought with her a hope to this night in this place to meet with someone that would 
resurrect her spiritual life. Jesus said something that is very interesting. Whoever believes in me, even if he's dead, he will live again. And that's why he's saying tonight, do you believe in Jesus? Now the Lord is resurrecting your spiritual life, is resurrecting the plan and the project of God in your life. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. The Lord also has shown in his spiritual gift a man. And he has accepted the invitation to be on the service. The invitation came from his wife. So he did not belong to the church. But his wife belongs to the church. And he came because of this as, no, uh, he came along with her. But the Lord doesn't want you to just to come along. The Lord wants you to be a participant. Uh, the gift says that this man has faced life like a, a chess board. I know that there are chess players here. There is one on the back and another here. And they, he tried many uh, moves. And the moves that he tried, they didn't work out. And he was frustrated because he didn't know he was not able to make the right move in order to win the game. The game of life is very complex. Whoever plays chess knows this. If you play, if you make the wrong move, it will be a checkmate. Right. The chess, game of chess, there is, there is a piece. Oh, there is a, a chess clock. It's like a chess clock. If you take too long, you, your time will run out and the game will be over. You understand that? The life is not a game. It's not a game of chance. The life is a choice. And the Lord wants you to choose Jesus so that you may be a victorious. Because you alone, you will continue playing the game of life and losing. But the Lord wants you from this day forward to stop being a loser, but become a victorious in Christ, in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. Lord, we'll praise you. We're thankful because to this day you have helped us, you have given us help. You have girded our waist. You have given us oils for our lamp. We praise you. Give you thanks, Lord, because your church is getting ready for this great day where we'll celebrate, Lord, the supper with you in your eternity. We praise you. We are thankful for this night because once again, we say hallelujah and glory and honor and praise to you, Lord, for this privilege of knowing, Lord, that one day we'll meet with you in your eternity. Take your people home in peace under your protection and give us a week, a blessed week, blessed by you. We pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. If you, my brother and sister, who, who came here with us, if you need a prayer for your life, a qualification of the word that was said here, remain where you are, raise your hand so that we may identify you, and then we're going to give you the proper assistant. assistance. And I want to say from this moment forward that you, you may, we invite you to come once again to this place, have service on Tuesday and Thursdays at 8, and Saturday we have a service geared toward women at 6 and at 7.30, on s Saturday and Sunday, we have service of qualification of the Lord. And every Sunday at 10 30 in the morning, you have a Sunday school. You're invited to participate with us. If anybody needs an assistant, just raise your hand. <laughs> 